Interest rates are set to hit 5% in 2023. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a special weekend edition of our daily show discussing markets. With the breaking news that's coming out right now, we know that pretty much China is going to stick with the COVID zero policy. This is going to have massive implications on markets around the world over the coming months. As many of you would be aware by now, we have an inflation problem, supply and demand. In many ways, the supply of the world is often driven by China. So with lockdowns potentially looming in the future, what does this actually mean for these markets? Well, what might surprise you with the data, with going back over well over 100 years of information, may be in store for actually a squeeze. And we've got a lot of things to discuss over the next week and coming weeks. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show here where we talk about stocks, commodities and cryptos. We'll start off with the news headlines. We'll get into the macro data using history, the lead indicators, and of course, what's underneath the hood happening on the smaller timeframes. Z vows to strengthen China's military as the party Congress begins. But the most important thing here is, of course, the COVID zero policy. And for many bulls out there or people that are wanting to be bullish on the market, it's not so good for you guys. Unfortunately, it looks like they're going to reiterate the validity of the zero COVID policy that continues to shut down major cities, disrupting everything about the supply chain. The Chinese government had protected people's safety in the speech to the highest degree, he said, and achieved significant positive results in coordinating epidemic prevention and control and social and economic development. So I think this is a bit of a problem here, and I think it's going to cause serious significant issues in the markets over the medium term. It's a bit problematic for sure, but that doesn't mean that markets can't turn for now. Of course, anything can happen, but with the rising cases, it is going to be a major story. So what have we got here? Let's get started into some of the information. The composite washout model signal. Now we've seen this happen a few times in 2022 and we've just gone over the signal reading. Now this historically happened during that previous little bit of a bull rally, the Fed pivot as you could say. We've now just seen a very similar reading. Let's have a look at what that data means for markets over the next coming weeks. So basically over the next coming weeks, it's a 71, 69, 74 kind of percent chance of positive action. Now what you'll notice because we're mostly tracking very much in line with 2007, 2008, is it actually happened right after the watershed moment and we saw some sideways chopping action in the markets. That's actually kind of what we've been seeing recently. Now, after that, of course, we had further lows to go, but historically it's given us some positivity over the next couple of weeks. Let's look further into the data. What else could make us feel potentially positive just from the data standpoint? Well, of course, the massive amount of people that are bearish. Large traders net speculative premiums on options expiration is massive. It's near the global financial crisis panic. We know this is significant because we are now in the third week options expiration. Now, if Wall Street don't want to pay these options out in general, this probably is the week that you see something like a dead cat bounce or a ripper rally. That's what they call them in terms of technical terms. What about S&P 500 after negative 20% year to date? Is this the time we tend to see markets turn? Well, other than 2007, 2008, it was always the time. In fact, every other reading we've had was bottoms of these markets. 80% of the time a week later, we were positive, then 60, then 80, then 80, then 80. And of course, 12 months later, we were 100%. So this could be a positive kind of factor there for some investors. It's been a bad year. We can see the track here. This is actually how we've been tracking to the other years that have been down negative 20% through the start of the year. Funnily enough, it's very, very similar to quite a few of them. And in fact, let's have a look here. We've checked this chart out before. This is 2007. This is exactly where we saw that huge fall off in the market. Then 73, we saw a bounce. In 1961, we saw a bounce. In 2001, we saw a bounce. And in 1965, we saw a bounce. So all of the closest tracking markets, except for 2007, 2008, actually saw a bounce around this period. Is it possible that happens again? There are the reasons that people are getting a little bit more positive on the markets. Of course, they saw a huge ripper rally 
when we had that inflation figure, the market opened down as much as 3% and then rallied all the way back up. Now it's given back a bit of that since Friday, which is really much, very much in expectations of what we thought. And we've got the charts coming at you very soon. New lows contracting. Is this a big thing? Well, divergence is, of course, something people look at, but this is the percentage of S&P 500 issued registered companies here hitting 21 day lows. So that's actually showing you that, yes, we're getting stocks hitting new lows, but across the board, we're not seeing as many companies hitting new lows. And this is fairly significant. Again, it's a slightly more positive factor when you're talking about markets. And again, we've got that one outlier period, which was 2007, 2008. We actually saw the reading, we went sideways for a bit, and then we just dumped massively straight after that. So if we're tracking, which we are most likely correlated the closest with that period of time, then there could be some problems ahead. Though at the time being, it kind of looks semi-positive. We also had some markets opening with future gaps that were massive. This happened, of course, on the Thursday of last week. We saw over 2% down gap and that was at the 52 week low. Again, the positivity over the next coming days tended to be relatively good. So it held up. Now there was of course one outlier time and that was over here in 2008. It just went tanking and tanking and tanking down. However, the difference there was that we kept closing on the lows. That meant that the market was actually closing on the low. The next day it was opening, ripping up and then just absolutely getting smashed straight back down. This is a little bit different to what we saw this time around and closure will be absolutely key in this week moving forward. The same readings here, S&P 500 futures after 1% down opening on the 52 week low. Again, there is some positivity there if you wanna take it. Where are we in the time of seasonality? Well, normal years, we actually continue kind of going down till the end of October and then we usually turn positive. During most midterm election years, we should already be going bullish. So we're not really following the normal midterm election year cycle, which we have been seeing recently. Here's a quick pause screen if you're interested, guys. This just shows you over 200 years of US bear market da data and recoveries if you're interested. And do remember as well, recently we've got another statistic coming out, which has been that no one wants to hold on the Fridays. The Friday expiration has been shocking over the last 10 weeks. Let's move over now to what's going on this week though, because it's all about earnings. We've got so many things. We've got Netflix, we've got Tesla, the big two kind of tech companies coming out, more banks. We did see some positive results from JP Morgan. Again, is positivity really a good thing anymore? The market went initially up and then sold off by the end of the day. Bank of America coming out on Monday, Charles Schwab, etc. But I think it's going to be probably these two that kick us off in a bad or good way. Will Netflix recover and will Tesla hold the market up the way it's been doing? I think all eyes will be on both of those, Tuesday after the close and Wednesday after the close. Of course, we'll be covering it here on the channel, so make sure to subscribe if you're interested. So just before we jump into the charts and take a look at the key levels that you should be watching right now, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Tiger Brokers. 2022 has been marked by big news events. You need a broker, of course, that offers all of those news feeds or at least a service. And the good thing is Tiger Brokers has these services, including a bunch of premium services, which you can scroll through within their platform. But with earnings season coming up, we need, of course, to know when those reports are coming out, when your dividends are going to be paid. And it's very important to specifically tailor that potentially for your positions. There's so many companies out there, which ones do you want to see? The good thing is you can select a watch list or position within the Tiger Brokers platform. And my favorite feature is being able to switch between the viewpoints. Do you want monthly calendar? So you can check out your positions. Would you like weekly? You could view it all here. Do remind yourself guys as well to set alerts within your trading platforms and make sure you're always aware of all these things that are coming out. One of my favorite features in Tiger Brokers platform is to being able to set those alerts. You can right click on your charts here and then of course you can select price alert, move up or down to a Zert level and set them so that you're reminded when something hits. There's nothing worse than missing an opportunity because you weren't at the screen 
and you hadn't set an alert. So big thank you for them today. And of course, if you're interested from especially the Australian and New Zealand audience, there is some special offers down below that you can take a look at where you get an extra 40 zip stock when you sign up and fund the account for as little as one cent. If you're from somewhere else around the world, don't worry, there's other offers down there as well. So check them out if you're interested and let's get into the charts. So let's get into these charts and talk about everything to do with the lead indicators and then get into the key data. Well, we've got the VIX here. The volatility index is pretty significant. Of course, we know that volatility is high and we're still only sitting around 32. Now, just to let anyone else know that's a first time viewer or hasn't been around for a while, we tend to see very huge spikes in the VIX when it comes to the bottoming of markets, the capitulation, the fear. That's what we're looking for still happening before we can say, okay, well, this market probably has bottomed. Now, if we turn at this point and we rally, there's a good chance based on what we're seeing with the COVID zero policy and all these other things and the negative data coming out that there could be worse to come. And the reason why that is, is got to do with yields. Here's the yields and they're still shooting up. Now, we know that if the market does recover here and stock and yields keep going up, it has historically been horrible for the market. You can just overlay the SPX on top if you're ever interested and you'll see this reading. When we get upward ticking kind of yield, it goes down and that's usually the way the markets have really worked in the past. You get here upward ticking yield, it starts to struggle and of course fails at that period. Now, where are we back to? We're all the way back before the global financial crisis, we're entering now into the critical range where we need yields to turn. I've often said that past five, five and a half percent, I really feel that the market, that is realistically the global market, the Eurozone, uh, everywhere really, China, America, everyone, we won't be able to handle these rates for that long. And of course, sticky inflation is the issue. Let me just show you some of the dates next year that we're looking at in terms of these high rates. So 4.95%, basically 5% by April of 2023 is the expectation. By September, it's still gonna be sitting at that level, 4.86. And this is taken at this time of recording. And then only one rate cut into December of 2023. So again, this is a big issue. And if these keep rising and let's say stocks go up, it's most likely a dead cat bounce or a rip rally or something very dodgy because you've got to be very careful here. These yields do matter. Speaking of yields, we'll actually move in here just to high yield corporate bonds. We saw some recovery through that rip session and then some sell off on Friday. We do not want to see high yield. If you're a bull in these markets, you do not want to see high yields go back under those lows while the stock market stuffs around. It's been a bit of a precursor of the market turning. Remember, we saw weakness here and the market was turning. We saw a lower high in terms of here and that showed us that the Fed most likely wasn't pivoting. Looking at bonds can help us and of course, this one did. It was similar for high-grade investment corporate bonds. They also dropped through the session. So another negative read here when it comes to basically bonds and what they're telling us about the market, something we'll have to watch very, very closely. So yes, most things actually happened the way we thought they would. We hit kind of critical levels, we pulled back. It's time now, if the market is going to go bullish, it's kind of got to go around this level. So the dollar index we start with here, we broke that previous little level of demand. We effectively did that kind of peak, higher peak, trough, lower, trough kind of change of trend here. Now that's a fairly significant change and it's pulled back pushing to those extremes that we discussed. This is kind of the zone that you wanna see now it turn back around. If it doesn't do that and it keeps pulling higher, that's just not positive for the SPX. The SP500 is going to struggle if we keep seeing a very strong US dollar. And remember, if it does break through here, it's going to be very significant. Let's have a look at the weekly close. Again, it's just more in line with bullishness. We've seen the first signs of turnaround, but we haven't necessarily, it's really a very aggressive first time frame change. To really say this thing's actually turning down, you're going to want to take out that 110.25 demand. And that level has not been taken yet. So if we keep pushing through, we get a new high, the next stop for the US dollar could be 120. And most likely that means the stock markets will be weakening heavily. So the trades off that level, of course, would mean that the Euro should hold here. You can kind of see the equilibrium going through this area. 
one of the most touched zones. Therefore, it probably holds the most amount of orders. The market has come back to that by the Friday close waiting for turnarounds. I kind of favor the concept of a potential turn to the bull side here. And the main reason is because of that US dollar having that first time frame kind of change of trend. That's fairly significant. It's not huge, but it's fairly significant. And we do need to take out this high to really show and solidify that the whole dollar euro has turned. 98.20 will be a key level. I'll put a little alert there, so we'll have it for next week. And of course, guys, just a reminder, if you are a technical trader, if you like looking at charts, set your alerts. Use a platform that you can set your alerts like Tiger Brokers or anything else. You need the alerts. Otherwise, you're just sitting in front of the charts and you're better off going and doing something more productive, coming back when the alerts hit or getting them sent to your mobile or whatever else, email, and then you can at least know when you need to be sitting in front of the charts and when you need to be taking those actions. Let's take a look at gold. Gold's back at that demand level. It bounced sold directly off that zone and i guess gold's still looking quite negative for now we've got an alert up here around this 1683 for where gold could go positive but for now still very weak it made a new low and you'll notice that it closed right on that previous weekly close level so very very significant here now once gold broke through all of these levels it kind of was telling us that it could move all the way down to 1525 or even to the 1460, 1469 level. Now, this is what gold does. If yields keep rising, and let's say we go to five and a half or even 6%, do not expect gold to be doing very well. It's on support. If the dollar index moves, then gold will buy up. But it's kind of, I guess it was nice level over here for buying during the session, that session before. Right now, you're going to need to see at least a mini take of 1646 and that's only a very small kind of turn uh, yeah there's a lot more to come here for gold and i think that you need to look at the higher time frames a little bit more there us oil similar we still maintain or at least i do personally that i think oil is going to drop over the medium to long term and the main reason is because demand should be dropping with this high yield the higher the interest even though initially it's good for oil Traditionally, it actually will go down after that point. We did see a little bit of a break of a new low. So I think pulls could be met by sell here on US oil. We were looking for that positive kind of sign. We liked that first initial turn on the previous session, but unless the US dollar goes down, it's gonna be hard to get oil through. 91 or $90.50 a barrel would be a significant breakout this week and certainly worthwhile having like a little alert just on, just before that. That's the kind of zone they'll be looking for. Buyers should be here basically. And if they're not, well, that's gonna be a problem. Let's now talk about the markets, the stock markets. And we'll use some key indicators to show us some of the problems with this market. First up, we'll use XLY, XLP. Many of you guys would know, I use this to see the American consumer. Basically, what does the market think? Consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. Now coming out of a crash, if we're going out of a crash, we should see consumer discretionary beat staples heavily and basically take off fairly strongly. We had that double top a few weeks ago and we've broken down lower. That's a problem here, guys, because what it's telling us, all of us, is it's saying you know, if this is an issue and we don't like holding discretionary, we'd rather hold staples. And it's that change in market sentiment that just happened over the last couple of weeks that was more significant during this fall. If we now get a new low forming on XLY, XLP, that could be very bad for the US economy. So we're gonna to have to watch this one fairly closely. Another one we're going to wanna to watch is XLF, the financials. As we know, the earnings are coming out and so far it's not been necessarily horrible across the board. Time will tell whether it really is. But this one tends to track very strongly with the S&P 500. You can always load up the SPX and you can see here that they almost track very, very identically together. Generally, what I like to see is financials either doing well or sideways for the stock market to be doing good. If financials are falling, it's kind of like the bedrock. You do not want financials falling. It's, uh, it's a bad one. Just like they're not the first to come off the bottom, they're also one of those ones that gets beaten up when the market decides that it's kind of toxic. When debt becomes toxic, these guys tend to feel the brunt. 
And at this point, you'll see they're kind of tracking together with those new lows formed. I'd love to see the banks kind of break out to the upside. That could be a small bullish indicator for now. We'll find out whether that does happen. Let's move over to some of the stocks. Now, this one was the most worrying one coming into earnings. That was Tesla. Tesla actually broke below. This was one of the stocks making a new low while we actually rallied through most of the stocks through Thursday into Friday. Even though we dropped on Friday, we we're still up from where we were on Thursday. So when we take a look at this one, this is an issue. 204, a close below the previous lows. Yeah, frankly, this is not that bullish for Tesla. You'll see we had the alert here that never triggered. We thought there could be a turn here. It happened earlier. Maybe Tesla is decoupling a little bit from the rest of the market. And the reason I say that is that weekly close, let's have a look here. It's gotten underneath all those previous ones. So rallies could be meant by sell demand. I don't really like what we see, but I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. I could seriously see Tesla pushing back into these 180s. You'll notice I put a little alert there because I think this is where Tesla may want to go. It may want to go back down to these 180s, hit this previous demand, and really put that pressure on people. It's earnings this week. If it doesn't live up to expectations, seriously watch out. The one thing about great growth stocks is if they ever come out of growth, they get really hurt. Now, that could be a great opportunity for some people. Maybe you guys are looking for it, but that 180 is something I'm gonna be looking at from an intraday perspective. And then of course, this specific structure over here will be very important. I can't say I like that close though. Getting a close underneath the low is relatively significant in terms of negativity. Now, Apple certainly didn't do that. Apple just basically came back down to its previous levels. You can see here on the weekly, it created basically a long leg doji. You guys know what that is, like equilibrium or no decision really made. So it's just sitting in the middle of nowhere land and uh, that could be good or bad. That's the problem. So we'll have to look at some other stocks. Microsoft again, actually this was not too bad, came right off our trend line. That was pretty beautiful last week, hit that trend line, smashed straight off it. And then we saw it sell off, of course, on the Friday session. Uh, still at a pretty good level and it, it's kind of still at a decent zone here when you're talking about Microsoft. Nvidia, not so good either. This one actually fell through on the weekly. So I wanted to see it hold this level to show us bullish intentions. It didn't do so. So even if the stock market does go bullish, possibly that means there's more pain to come from Nvidia. That was not a great close on this particular stock. And we saw that across a few of the big tech stocks. They were unfortunately falling through. I'm not sure exactly what happened to AMD, but I want to just load it up here. You'll see AMD has fallen significantly over the last couple of weeks. And I've always had these alerts here just in case we hit those zones because they're interesting levels. But unfortunately, chips, anything to do with like semiconductors, if you look at the semiconductor index, a lot of these fell pretty extreme over the last week and really didn't recover in line with the rest of the market. And that goes in line with that idea of XLY versus XLP. Basically, Wall Street starting to hunker up back into staple positions. Look, it held pretty well. In fact, you could see that rotation happening back into there. Something to watch out for. And we'll continue to watch utilities, staples, healthcare to see whether this market during a potential ramp here might be going defensive. If it is, that's a great warning sign that it's a fake rally. And that's something that we'll be looking at should we get one. UK 100, yeah, it's uh, sitting right on the demand. Again, this was one of those charts we bought up because it's such a significant level. No breakout to the low yet. Uh, definitely some nasty looking candles, but the weekly ends with a bit of a wick towards the uh, upside. So there was some demand, there were some buyers. Was it real? We'll find out soon. The DAX. Nothing much from this one, just basically still hovering around the same zone. Let's move over to the NASDAQ now. And if we go to a weekly, you can see here it came off those levels that were created back in 2020, back in July. I mean, we're starting to get down there with those uh, prices that are almost close to the pre-pandemic highs. So we came down, we did reject on the week. We had a horrible candle the week before. Is this enough turnaround? Let's have a look at the US 100 now. And this is two things I want to bring up. We're basically hitting something that I kind of like, the golden pocket, they call it. Between the 61.8 fib and the 66 garn number, we get the golden pocket. And we've used the golden pocket a few times on our show to discuss levels. 
we've seen the stock markets come back to the golden pocket off the sell-off. If they're going to turn, this should be around the level that they do so if they're going to do it. And the reason why is because what if they keep pushing down, they're most likely going to make new lows. It's not really showing us that this first initial rally has any thrust or any real buyers in it. You don't want to see a market go all the way back down to zero, back down to the bottom again, generally speaking. There was a thrust. What reason? Probably a squeeze and uh, would have done a good job. Well, what would be a good week to squeeze? Technically this week, it's options expiration. There's still a gap that hasn't been filled above and we're at that golden ratio. Let's have a look at the US 500. Is that similar? So you can see here, we've got a market coming back down. Let's take a look at the weekly close here. Long leg doji. So our favorite stock market to look at here, the S&P 500 equilibrium or happy with where it closed basically. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's indecisive. It's like, you know, that's not a bad level for us to close. We did hit the, the closure points of the 3500s. So that was the previous highs. Uh, unfortunately, this level, as we mentioned it before, 3500, which it hit, 3400 and 32, kind of 60, 50, which is down here, are the key zones for these markets to potentially bounce off. We've hit number one and we've bounced. We've, let's have a look now, I guess, at the smaller time frames. Let's go into the one hour. So we've still got a gap to fill that's up here. We still, which is 37.42. We did rally, which is what we thought in the last video in terms of we, we had the rally. We did sell off back down to the exact level where we thought it would be. This is again, another golden ratio. So a golden pocket. And it's a golden pocket with a lot of structure in it. So because it had previous kind of issues here or orders, it's come back to its equilibrium. It's pretty happy with itself. It would make sense for the market maybe to take some stops underneath here and potentially try a rally. So will Monday bring that even with this extra negative news of the uh, of China you know, sticking with the COVID zero policy? Could we get a rally? Again, bull guys will want that. Let's take a look at the bear scenarios though. And most bears will just be looking for absolute capitulation they want to see new lows and just tanks fest you know hit 3400 potentially a rally maybe come back to the lows that were previously broken and then just basically push to 3250 bears are going to have a tough time here if you sold friday congrats that was a probably a pretty good damn well, it was a damn good sell actually uh, but what i'd like to see this market do is to rally back to some key levels and you'll notice i've got this 3880 and 4109 so these two levels I'd like to actually see this squeeze into these zones. If we squeezed into this box here or we squeezed into the previous box up here, it could be very, very significant. So for the week ahead, any breakout probably past this high is going to now be fairly significant. Turn point could be here. I mean, it's, it's certainly significant, significant level on Monday. And from the data, from all that data we pulled, it kind of points towards this being a very decent potential of, you know, turnaround. I mean, that's a data, of course, you know, practice risk management, do all those things, but certainly interesting here. So let's now have a look at the options expiration. Why could it be happening? Well, the main reason it could be happening has to do with the options expiration. But I will say this about this options expiration, although Max Payne's at 377, take a look where the put walls are that we like to call them. Where are the most sold options? It's bizarre. 330, 340, and then we've got the 360s. So actually, when you think about it, most of the options, most of the places Wall Street really doesn't want to pay out is those 340 or 330 puts. So that could mean the market could go all the way down to like 330, then bounce to 340. This is possible. I mean, it could be capitulation. And, and that's what, and they would still be pretty happy with that because that's where those options expirations are. I very much doubt these two are going to get paid out, but that's where the big walls are 360, 340, 330. So the big walls are there. There's not that much buying activity, and technically, Max Payne's at 377. We've seen some of these third weeks go to the Max Payne, and it will change. It will um, go up and down. If we look at the Monday's one, this is the Monday expiration, 362 current price, 356. And most of the puts, again, quite far away from where they currently are. So options don't give us too much this week, but we do know that technically the pain is to the upside. So the squeeze would be where the pain would be. Bitcoin is 
super holding solid actually for the weekend. And this is sitting right on that structural level. So we've seen again, very similar to the stock market here, a break, a massive rally up, a sell back to the level we definitely thought it would come to. And this is where those bulls have to take control. I believe if the stock market goes up, potentially again, the crypto market will follow. There are some serious significant issues though with crypto. I've said it for a while. Uh, my personal opinion is that crypto could fall 83 to 86%. And that takes us down to around 11.5 to 9.5. Okay, basically in this box down here that I've got drew on. Yeah, that would be fairly significant, but that's very, very big potential here on crypto. If you take a look at these candles as well, it seems like each one has been mostly rejecting. We don't have the current weekly close. So yeah, I mean, look, if it gets through these weeks, watch out. Could be one of those watershed moments. You've got to be very careful here in crypto. It's at, at this stage, a little bit of support. Hopefully it bounces through. News ahead, not that much this week. We've got Monday, we've got the Empire State Manufacturing Index, which is at 8.30 a.m. New York time. Then we scroll through a bunch of other countries other than the U.S. coming out with data. We've got the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, 8.30 a.m. Thursday. Again, I don't think it's going to be a significant number. At the moment, the big things are still the Fed. Any data to do with inflation, especially the inflation number itself, and that seems to be the big catalyst. The rest is mostly just kind of noise in between that's going to affect scalpers. As always, guys, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't smashed that like button, please do so and consider, you know, maybe even joining us in our Discord or Twitter communities. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to, of course, the sponsor of today's video, which is Tiger Brokers. If you're interested in finding out more about the brokerage, you can click on the description down below. You can jump in and look at the special offers. And do remember to the New Zealanders and Australian audience out there, there is a special extra bonus for you guys. Sorry for the rest of the world, but uh, <laughs> that's what we've got at the moment. So there's an extra little bonus out there if you're interested, which is the extra zip stocks. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next one.